Hello, I'm Jocelyn. Thank you for selecting our video from among millions of others. Guess what we've got today. Take a deep breath and you're on your way to feeling better. When a person begins to get beyond themselves, the only thing they're left as is pure consciousness. They're left as an awareness. Aware that they're aware in infinite space. Now the quantum field is an invisible field of information that transcends time and space. In other words, there's no people there, there's no bodies, there's no things, there's no places, there isn't even time. So take away the Earth, take away the moon, take away the stars, take away the light from the stars, take away the galaxies, take away everything material. And what are you left with? Just an infinite space of nothing physical. That is the quantum field. But just because you can't see something doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So you can only experience that field with your awareness. Now, getting people to that elegant moment, we can only talk around. You have to practice doing it. And now I'm happy to say after six years of laboring with people to get beyond themselves and to be able to slow their brainwaves down from that beta brainwave pattern, that high beta brainwave pattern into alpha and theta, the whole purpose of meditation is to get beyond the analytical mind. And what separates the conscious mind from the subconscious mind is the analytical mind. So then as people begin to slow down their brainwave patterns, they're actually entering the operating system where all those hardwired attitudes and automatic habits and programs and emotional reactions and addictions exist. Now they can begin to make measurable changes. So then if you take a group of people and you you work with them to get beyond themselves. There's going to be an enormous amount of chaos that's going to be created in the brain and the body, and they're going to want to quit and they're going to give up and they're going to get frustrated. But if I give them another opportunity, they're going to do it again. If I give them another opportunity, sooner or later, they're going to finally surrender. And when they do, they're going to connect to that field. And it's, it's the most familiar, unfamiliar feeling you'll ever have. It's a, a level of coherence or order because as you get closer and closer to that field as an awareness, you experience greater and greater degrees of oneness and wholeness and less separation. So if you feel less separate from your dreams, then you feel like you already have them. You're no longer in want or lack. You feel whole. And when you feel whole, you can't want because you feel like you have everything. And that is the perfect place to create from. And so We've worked, Michael, so hard in helping people to get to these points. And, and I'm so happy to say that when we're doing these week-long events now, I, I never ever in my life thought I'd be witnessing what I'm witnessing in terms of changes in health and, and mystical experiences. And you can't tell me now you're too old to do this. You can't tell me that now. You can't tell me you're too sick to do this. You can't even tell me that because I've seen all kinds of ages and all kinds of sick people really reverse some great serious health conditions. You can't tell me you had a turbulent past and, and you can't change because I've, I've seen some people with some really turbulent pasts get beyond it. I've seen people that were out of shape, overweight, underweight, vegetarians, carnivores. I've seen it happen in all different sizes, shapes, and people. And, and, and the beauty behind it is, is that it's inclusive and um, it's happening more and more. Heart coherence is another way to begin to slow your brainwave patterns down. When you're feeling with your heart, I always say the brain thinks but the heart knows. When you're feeling with your heart and you're trusting the intuition of your heart, that's because your, your energetic field is tapping into information and your heart becomes the compass for you to know. So then when you lead with your heart in your life, it's very different than leading from any, any other place. So. If you're going to believe in a future that you're creating with all of your heart, it better be open and activated. So heart coherence is another way. Uh, we have a breathing, certain breathing techniques that we teach people that help to slow their brainwave patterns down to get into that, in, to get into that place. But I mean, there's many ways to go about it, but the key is that you do it. Because <laughs> if you don't do it, you're probably not going to experience the benefits. And just like any skill or any habit, in the beginning, it takes a lot of conscious effort, but then once you get good at it, then you can do it automatically. And we have people in our, our work that we've measured their brain wave patterns. They can change their brain waves in four seconds, five seconds, nine seconds, 12 seconds. It's not like, hey, I'm getting to the quantum field before you. It's more like, I know how to do this. Uh, I've been doing it. I know how to get there. It's a skill. And um, that becomes highly effective and important when you're 
out of balance and you need to make your way back to balance, our, our community just naturally says, excuse me, I'm going to take a few moments and get centered here. Um, you have to come up against the end of your emotional belief. You have to come to the very point where you don't think you can go any further, that you've reached the end and you don't believe that there's anything beyond that. And then you have to step out a little further and go a little further than where you thought you could go. Every time you do that, something awakens in you. You have more respect for yourself. You have more respect for life. You have more respect for others because you realize that change isn't that easy. You start to feel this kind of sense of peace and and compassion because you've come up against your own limits and you, you're stretching yourself beyond those limits. So then when you finally free yourself from the chains of those emotions and those habits that keep you anchored to the past, there's a liberation of energy. And that liberation of energy is the body going from particle to wave, from matter to energy. And that energy that's being released, the body starts to feel what we call joy or love or freedom. And that is what I call the natural state of being. So you're not getting that joy or that freedom or that love from anything outside of you. There's nothing out there that's creating it. It's happening from within you. So then we see then in our research, when people really start to cross that river of change and start to break through and they begin to activate certain latent systems in their brain and those latent systems start signaling oxytocin, oxytocin, the love chemical, oxytocin signals nitric oxide, nitric oxide signals a chemical that causes your heart and lungs to swell. Your heart literally is engorging with energy and blood and it's literally swelling and this center now is activated. So then when you feel that, you're, you're not going to want to lose that feeling. In fact, if you start judging another person, if you start getting impatient with another person, you'll notice that feeling will go away. You start analyzing yourself, that feeling will go away. Go away. So then it makes sense then that when you feel that level of wholeness, that you feel so whole that you wouldn't want to lose the feeling, then self-love leads to allowing, which means I'm just going to allow you because I'm so in love with myself, I can allow you. When I'm not in love with me, I'm going to pick you apart. But the more in love I am with myself, the more love and appreciation I have for all things. I am no longer in the same energy as my enemy, or the, or in the same energy as my coworker that I despise. I'm in a different energy. So then if you're not a judging or a criticizing, then you're not dividing your energy. And if you're not dividing your energy, you're going to feel joy as a side effect. So then more and more people start to figure this out. In other words, if you spend two hours in a meditation, getting beyond your fear or your anger or your pain or your suffering. It took you two hours to get beyond it. And you feel the liberation of you getting beyond those limited states. I guarantee you, you would be walking around in your life celebrating because that divine intelligence that's living in you, that's giving you life, is now expressing itself through you to a greater measure. So then, you're in love with life because you're connected to life. And imagine how far you can go with this because the more you connect to that field and the more you connect to that life essence, the more you're going to feel in love with life because that's where your attention is. I, I guarantee you that if you did that every single day, you would be less likely to want to feel fear or pain or suffering or anger and more likely to want to feel those elevated states. And you're not going to be relying on anybody to make you happy. Did our video satisfy your soul in some way? Thank you a million times over for your help. We appreciate it more than you can imagine. Don't forget to leave us a comment and hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed it. See you later.